And without further ado, right, this was Mr. Bruce Ashfield. All right, uh, hi everybody. I'm, I'm going to shoot. So I, I was at US. I was telling a few people I'm going to try to shoot a little bit higher on the containers side of things. I'm going to talk about. Um, some of the bigger things that we can build with open embedded versus the mechanics of making small containers and, and things like that. And I'll, I'll say again, my talk could, I could have enough content for, I don't know, 15 minutes to three hours because I've never, <laughs> I've never done this out loud. So we'll see how it goes. So I work for Xilinx and uh, so I have, but this is just sort of a general about, uh, I'm talking about CNCF on the edge or embedded devices or an automotive or you pick your vertical and it's about not just containers but the orchestration and some of the networking and different things around containers that people might not know are in say meta virtualization right now the bits that are in core and how you can uh, plug them all together so I'm gonna I, you know I've, I've kind of been at this a, a while myself and you take for granted a little bit of some of the stuff. So I've got first two slides or just a little bit of background, just a quick level set on what I'm talking about because everybody's got a different definition, a different definition for some of these things. And then why you would use OE for this versus doing a, 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 a Docker build with your favorite Alpine container or whatever and, and then building it up that way. Um, where you can find these different bits in the open embedded ecosystem some things to some pitfalls. This slide is kind of based on some of the discussions we had in Lyon at the OE developers meeting. And then I have a very quick example of showing how you could build an OCI container directly, um, push it to Docker Hub and then pull it onto your, um, pull it onto your target. The registry of your choice if you don't want to use Docker. Uh, so this is the one that, you know, there's even two sort of competing definitions. What I'm saying, CNCF, that's the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, and so they define, you know, this is very marketing <laughs> kind of definitions of um, Cloud Native. But what they're talking about, it's, it's the whole, it's everything from the pipeline, you know, throw in your CI, CD, throw in your um, containers, the orchestration, the, all the components, the standard base parts of it to build and deliver your application, right? So that's what CNCF, they say about it. And the Linux Foundation one is, you know, they're all about the using an open source software stack to deploy applications as microservices, package, blah, 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 each part individually. But I mean, you know, that screams something that Open Embedded should be able to do really well when you're talking about, well, anything, even a, it doesn't even have to be a resource constrained device, right? But the thing I would, that I want people to take out of this slide is it's more than just, you know, it's more than just building a container if you're talking about sort of cloud native and the whole stack. I always, I've had different um, versions of this slide over the years, but you know, and again, when we talk about containers to most everybody here, most of the tech in, the, in a container, it's, it's not new, right? I mean, jails and truths way back in the day, and then C groups got added and resource controllers and kernel namespaces and then LXC popped up with a, sort of a, a better, little bit better front end to it. Docker arrived, and then we got uh, mandatory access control and SecComp and stackable uh, security modules. And then now you're into that uh, standardization efforts around OCI with the Open Container Initiative. You get the Run C and the specification. So it's been that building and making easier to use all of the plumbing that's 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 been around for a long time. But at the same time that the plumbing was sort of popping up in Linux and in the kernel and user space, you know, the orchestration side of cloud native, that bigger stack I'm talking about, was also developing. So you had, you know, what Google was doing internally way back in 03, 04. Then, you know, these are rough timelines, you know, that, that you know, DevOps started to become popular. Docker popped up in 2013. Um, then Google, you know, board kind of got open sourced as uh, Kubernetes, and then now there's this new thing, Kubo, that's that's sort of more of a another standardization effort for enterprise class stuff on top of uh, Kubernetes. Um, and I would say that you know, what about standardization? Because a lot of the stuff I talk about, it's all about 
looking for some sort of not hopping on any one ecosystem's definition of everything, meaning you don't want to be a Docker shop or you don't want to be whatever. So look for some standardization efforts and sort of follow that along. And so I would say, you know, the, the, the plumbing is now sufficiently mature that the standardization has happened, right? We have the OCI image specification and runtime and there's bindings and everybody's using those to launch and control everything from containers to VMs. If you walked around FOSDEM, you know, the, the CubeVert guys were there and, you know, there's, it's not just containers that this plumbing is sort of um, controlling now. Um, and that now the orchestration and the workflows are using that plumbing because they know it's going to be there on most every modern um, Linux distro, including something that you could build with Open Embedded. Uh, but there's no standardization there yet. It's sort of an ongoing uh, uh, process. So the use cases for what I'm going to talk about, you know, they were originally, of course, data center and, and sort of cloud application based and, and grew out of, you know, your whatever you like as a service, right? It, it grew out of all the, the cloud providers and, and the virtualization platforms. They all started with KVM and Zen. And then people wanted more density, so containers started popping up. So that's sort of the, the use cases of what I'm talking about. But um, those don't necessarily apply to what we're, we're doing in the embedded space. Except for if you look at sort of the, the use case goals that, that they publish that they publish and my warning there is like this is <laughs> this is marketing, right? That you know that to figure out how to produce products faster, to do add new features quicker and, and bug fix faster and deploy changes and you know get your application resilient uh, you know, reliability and resilience. Those are their goals. And of course there's the you know the the there's the anti point to all of these, you know, application reliability and resilience. If you have 50,000 microservices, your application is now so complex and slow that you can't debug or control it anymore, so you can't do anything else. But these are the kind of the goals that a lot of the DevOps and cloud native and these stacks, you know, they talk about. And of course, why wouldn't we want to be able to do some of this on our edge or embedded device? Um, and so, you know, the, the, of course we want those. And the reason why we can do some of this on the edge now is we have a lot more powerful devices. They're not all resource constrained. constrained. Um, you know, we get pushed very quickly to say, yeah, even though, you know, where I work, there's FPGAs and all kinds of acceleration engines and really low level things, but Nobody wants, not everybody wants to have to poke or to know that those bits are, are there. So they want to leverage the modern and the, the software stack. So you've got an, does it move? No. <laughs> Distracting. No, don't worry. You'll turn this off. Um, that they, they want to use even even a really sort of edge device, there's a whole set of developers and application users and, um, that don't want to see all of these details. They just want to write an application and deploy it. Right? So you, you, you get asked very quickly to provide that kind of a runtime uh, for them. Um, and if you're not doing that within, say, Open Embedded that's building your image, all of a sudden you're trying to map this stack that's not, you know, it's not tuned the same way, it doesn't work the same way, it's not, it's not a a cohesive image, so you need to be you need a kind of a way to do that at the same time. Um, and of course, everybody wants to do orchestration control and, and do updates at scale. Um, and my point is, it's better to build up on top of say an open embedded base than to take a, a Debian or something and try to tear it all apart and make it small and pull out the bits you want. And you'll see all those efforts. So we're saying we're coming up from the bottom, and that you know, we can build a similar kind of stack. Um, you know, how does, how can Open Embedded sort of meet the requirements of these edge devices and stacks and the deployment stuff? Because, you know, how does Open Embedded fit when, you know, it's really, when these use cases, they're really about the application, not the image, not the plumbing, not the, how optimized it is. But, 
you know, sure you can use OE to build, to compile your application, but, you know, in services, but really you can do that. You can do it anywhere. You can do it natively, cross, it doesn't really matter, especially with how uh, the languages that they're being written in, you don't really need um, for that. But the, you know, the, I think the, the real value is that, like I mentioned, that whole stack, that you can make an image that knows how to leverage um, the capabilities of a, some kind of small edge device, um, but then present that up in that standard interface, right? So you can unlock some of these hardware capabilities more easily uh, using an OE kind of uh, work throw, workflow on the bottom, right? So think about just you know, hardware. Um, uh, if you were in the in the radio talks yesterday, though, everybody was talking about the different, you know, the heterogeneous um, uh, processors, single SOC with multiple different types of interfaces, and then multiple of them all working together, right? So different ones. Think, you know, if you do still want to have a small footprint as possible to leave as much room for your application um, and uh, you know you don't want the system to get in the way security uh, smaller attack surface be able to deploy updates um, all that sort of thing hopefully coupled with it say a, um, an OE LTS release um, and I mentioned again a few times because I'm honor bound by where I work to mention that you might want to unlock FPGAs DSPs uh, this sort of thing which isn't that easy to do uh, with a, if you take an enterprise distro and strip it down. And then of course you want, you might need to turn on all of those little package configs and stuff yourself. And so that's what, you know, OE brings to this that's harder to do, um, potentially harder to do in another environment. All right, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but that's the, that's the level set and the problem statement, if you will, what, what we're trying to uh, solve. And so the question is, well, what can I already get somewhere in OE or Yocto or you know whatever in that, those ecosystems. So all the plumbing of course is in OE core, including the work that people have done over time to build images with no kernel, to um, you know to strip out those requirements, to build the, the package groups and the, the base support and all that stuff. That's all in, that's all, all in OE core. Um, the containers and the orchestration bits are in uh, meta virtualization and, and meta cloud services, which are the ones that I maintain. So I have to, to you know, plug them. Um, of course, there's platform services. There's other there's other layers that do you know, uh, update delivery and delta diffs and all that stuff. And that there's all kinds of solutions for that. And then of course there's various end to end solutions and distros that are that are building on all of those. So you can get pretty much every every part of it. So I'm saying that everything you need more than just building a little container you can probably find somewhere in the, the ecosystem, which most people don't know. We don't even know that, we get people that don't even know they can really build a container very well with OE, much less do some of this you know, deeper um, stack integration. So I just did a quick you know, rundown of sort of a few of the components and, and the details that are in there. So you know, you have the, Core images and the package list, so container base and some of these different uh, image types. You know, there's different container container runtimes in meta virtualization. You know, we have LXC, RunC, C Run, Podman, Docker. Um, they're all there. The container support and the infrastructure that's around containers, the networking uh, standard, right? Uh, NetNS, OCI image, go. You know, there we have all kinds of the tooling around. Uh, manipulating containers and getting them to run. We have orchestration bits and meta virtualization container Ds there, Kubernetes, um, shortly K3S and micro KS if you want the smaller variants, um, CATA containers if you want to do your VM that looks like a container. And then there's various container OSs that are built on top of it. And again, I mentioned you can do updating, deploying, provisioning. That's the broader ecosystem. Um, there's no one solution for that. Every time that comes up, every, <laughs> there's, there's no real uh, effort there. You have to move any of that into a sort of a reference mm -hmm. implementation. I will say this though, like, you know, if you look at the way I did all the Kubernetes and some of these higher level recipes and meta virtualization, the packaging is, because they're Go, like most of it's Go code. Um, the packaging isn't that different than other distros, that's a good thing because it should be hopefully in the, the bits that you expect. Um, but we do have the opportunity to 
tear them apart, make them smaller, maybe make some things optional, throw it, turn on some package configs to control the, um, the size of it. Um, and you know, the, we can do those bindings to the hardware more easily. Uh, and the base descriptions, you know, we have references for those. Um, you don't get that kind of packaging necessarily if you go there. You, know, you can get the, the deb for Kubernetes, but you know, we have image types and definitions and package groups that will help you pull together anything from a full system container running under LXE to a microservices to some kind of weird blend in the middle. Right. And this is a slide I was talking about that kind of came out um, uh, in Lyon when we were talking about trying to move a bit more of the some of the plumbing from meta virtualization into OE core, you know, that we didn't want to crown a particular runtime king, like not go all run C, not go all Docker, not go all whatever, right? Because that has and will continue to change over time. I don't know, maybe the next run C is going to replace by the Rust implementation. Everybody's going to want to use that, right? And so then we're, <laughs> we're different again. Um, and another pitfall that, I, that I'm always worried about is too much integration with the build system, right? You need to somehow do outputs, artifacts out of the build that you can reuse in ways that people want to use them. They might want to do a Docker build style reuse of the, uh, of the, the build after they don't want to necessarily invoke BitBake to manipulate some part of these containers that you're building every time. You need to have outputs in a, in a, in a way to, to use them. Um, and don't stay too focused on just doing a really tiny container, for example. Don't be too focused because a lot of you bump into a lot of people and say, I was told I need to run a container, I want to run a container, and they launch the container by hand the first time and they make it auto launch with system D and everything's good, but pretty quickly they're like, Well, now I need to do updates to my containers and I need to hook it into some kind of orchestration system. So you need to have the right hooks so they can grow out of that little simple uh, container solution. So yeah, my thing is, you know, focus on the standards and the plumbing and the core and then we can keep some of the stuff in the ecosystem layers so they can uh, they can iterate faster and change and, and, and do different things. All right, so that's all my, I'm uh, doing pretty good, a lot of information, but I did a quick example. Can we see, ah, it's white, so you can hopefully see it. I did a, a, a quick example just showing, I made a sample container in, um, in out of meta virtualization and, and Scott will probably recognize this because it looks a lot like the one that he did at ELCE two years two years ago now. No, not quite. Not quite, no. What <laughs> so you know it's similar. This is the one and this is actually something that we want to do because it popped up on the mailing list about a year ago. We need to go back and try to get one of these base definitions into OE core. But we don't want we should talk about it first and make sure we kind of like what it looks like. But so this is sort of the one and the only difference to this one that probably most people use is I have an inherit image OCI you can see there. So what that does is it'll either and the weird part about OCI image is it's not an image. It's just a directory full of metadata, right? It's so it creates um, either a directory or a tarball of the OCI image data of, of the build. So it's just another FS type and I implemented a a simple way without bringing in two million lines of Go code to create uh, an OCI can, uh, uh, container. So that's the little container thing they built, and it's just got BusyBox in it, right? It's just a, it's just a little shell. So you know, I I did make my simple um, container, and like I said, if I, I told mine in my configuration, I was telling it to build the tarred up version rather than just leaving the directory. So you wouldn't need to do what I did here if you weren't building a tar version. So I just untarred the container that was spit out by the build. And then I used Scopio to copy it to my, um, did I actually remember to take my password out? I, good, I did, good. I had, my <laughs> I had my password in there for a while uh, when I cut and pasted it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm just copying it up to my, um, to, to my own personal GitHub registry. I then booted my QMU X8664 image that I built with a few tools on it for, for containers. And then I just did a, I used Docker to pull it off. And you can see, you know, it, it, it brought it down and pulled it directly. And then 
And actually, I did this for fun too. And this is again something what we want to work on. And I'm sure people are better. At it. This is not the point of our presentation. I started to rat hole myself doing this. That you'll see, my sample busy box is 4.7. The um, sample container which I use Bash in was 5.3. But when you pull <coughs> busy box directly off of Docker Hub, it's 1.22 megabytes, right? So it's smaller than what I built, but when I did a quick check, the slash lib on mine is 3.7 megs, right? So most of it is library. So I imagine if I stripped out locales and did some other things, I could I could get down some of them. But if we do a, a reference container image, it would be nice to make sure that it was of similar size to this, which is why we don't want to just chuck one out and say, here it is, because people will use it and forevermore will have four times as big small containers. But yeah, so I see I had I pulled these down directly from even the ones I didn't build and then I just did a I just ran it and you can see that I just dropped into the busy block shell and and then I did another one where I just but of course mine was uh, built with uh, so yeah. So it's fully compatible, you can push and use them and then of course once it's there you could use that in your own Docker build and you could you could layer things on, on top of it. I was going to do this and then I decided it would be <laughs> way overkill, but I could uh, another time extend the example to show how you know we could actually build a full system container and boot you know uh, and boot a sys nested system D container or I could do a microservice and show how you know the only difference really it doesn't matter to that OCI image class it's just a different entry point and some different hooks uh, that get installed. Um, but everything that you need to build microservices or full system containers and all the hooks and support stuff is already in uh, meta virtualization. And the other one would be to show that if I built a little bit more into that base image that I was running Docker on, I could have it register into a Kubernetes cluster. And then you could just do a Kubernetes deploy and Kubelet would take the thing and it would run your container. And you know, you're part of a bigger cluster. Those would be the next level, probably more interesting. Um, demo to do to show that we can be a deeper stack in in an existing Kubernetes cluster, for example. And again, everything's there, the interoperability is working and everything's standard based. It's all OCI based. All right. And then my last thing I always you know future work is you know is to somehow if we can what John and I were talking about in Lyon, if we can do more um, by either binary reference feeds so not only could I push my container to Docker Hub I could actually add more packages to it out of my same build so I could um, I could do a docker build style thing on my base container plus more packages that I did out of either a reference build or, or, or my build um, to get a bit more of that OCI core plumbing in OE core and really it's just the little script to create the OCI container uh, OCI Image tools actually don't even, it's very little that you actually need to put in the core, then leave the run times you know, outside of core is what Richard and we were talking about before. Um, one thing that a lot of people ask about is this one. Uh, I don't know the right way to describe it, but cross deploy a container to an image. So not only, it, the right way to do it, it's with you know, image and image, right? You can use multi, do multi config, build an OCI container and then install it without me needing to do that docker pull, right? So install it into the image, make sure it's auto started. So not only you built your base image, you built your containers, you install them as part of the build and then when you boot, they're there and you run them, right? So we get asked that a lot on the meta virtualization list and right now it's a little bit... It's not obvious. It's not obvious <laughs> and everybody wants to do crazy things like I want to pull right off my docker hub as part of the build and then put it into the image and then what about licensing and all that? Like it's so it, we have to draw a nice, hopefully crisp line around what we want to do there. That, that should have a very big warning. Especially. Yeah, exactly. So that's the next thing to do is either try to get some examples and simplify that so that can be done. And again, you could push out not only S state and packages, you could push out some base containers as part, like as a, as a build artifact kind of thing, like as an output. So somebody else could consume your your builds and your, and, your, and, your, and your things that way. And that's it. Any questions? Yep. That's uh, absolutely intriguing, thank you. Um, I, I think we're quite behind the times in terms of what's available to us within OE. 
We've been working with um, Elena, who used to be resin for yep. quite some years now, and um, you know, great work there. There's a lot of value they're bringing in. They've got this open Belina set of layers that, that they put out there, and more recently, foundries that I have. Um, so all of that's great, but it, it kind of they seem to be very Docker centric. Um, they have their own branches of what they're doing with Docker. It kind of it starts to feel as though we're going down some rabbit holes and we're getting into you know you talked about not getting too locked in. They were one of the, that was those are some of the layers I was not calling up, but that's kind of the path that I'm thinking of. Yeah, those kind of things that you're very now yeah. specific to their yeah. the way that they're yeah. And you know, and you know, that just feels like a really bad thing. So what we're sort of talking about internally is how do we get over to something like something more open, more standards based OCI, and I, I guess. You know, we need to just engage more and look more at meta virtualization. Yep. Is there like documentation around in there that I've? There is some, yeah, and ask on the list, and it's actually on my to do list to write a whole bunch more. I, when I was going through this presentation, part of it was I was generating, and then there's also a roadmap and some different things in the metaverse in readme's, but I need to generate more cool. information on it. Now. I mean, so this deals with the device side. Um, and obviously these, these are the guys that have got the whole infrastructure in terms of the workflow. You push your code into Git, it gets built up in the cloud, and they do all the deployment down and that kind of thing. Um, where does that, where does all of that come into this? The goal is that you know you can run, you can build the right things that a meta virtualization <laughs> onto your image to plug into Kubernetes. Yeah, or whatever CI C D pipeline it may be, yeah, that right. you can still do that, and that way you're kind of free to choose whatever CI CD pipeline you, you want to right. to plug into. Yeah. Uh, sorry to go on, but yeah. the very last thing, what about all the security aspects of all of this? And how does, how does all that sort of play together with SE Linux and limiting kernel accesses? Yeah, I mean, you can set it all up. Um, we, we don't pick a default policy for you, but all of the tools are there. The OCI image tools can generate you can look at your set comp, can do, you can generate a, a config.json for run C that locks it down as much or as little as you want. You know, we do know because Meta SE Linux, we work with that, like they, the layers are compatible, right? So you can build up a security policy that, that it, meets it, whatever. It's a JSON configuration for the OCI image stuff that's yeah, if you, yep. not automated in a straightforward way right yep. now. That would be another feature. It's, it's yeah. to go from the OCI image that we can build to go through OCI runtime tool. Is this is a kind of a black box and a Docker does and stuff like that that you need to kind of build scripting around to do yourself. And there are some references I mentioned once. I didn't want to plug yet another one of my own things, but we built this container OS thing called Oversee that does a lot of that stuff. Like it, it generates these containers and it generates config JSONs that are locked. And so there are references you could find in some of the, the ecosystem to see how they're doing it and then, and then do something similar. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So we have these giant Linux Foundation cloud efforts, and you use many of the same words. Um, does anyone go to their conferences and talk about what we can do? I, I try. Do we try to engage with them? I tried a few times, and like I said, I've had my paper rejected 13 times. No. So, <laughs> this one. <laughs> so, is there anything we can do to raise our visibility in those communities? Because it seems like we're doing a lot of work and not. Yeah, we should, because everybody, nobody even knows barely that we can build a container, much less do all this stuff. I mean, so one of my jobs as a committed board member is go to Doctor Project Advisory Board meetings, and I'll definitely complain. You know, it's like we need to look at some of these places, and it would help if you were to complain to your uh, representative. Yeah, he works for Xilinx, which is a platinum member of the Doctor Project. So, <laughs> you know, for Xilinx, by the bars, um, it would help if you talk to your management you know it's like you know hey we need to be promoting this in the bigger projects yeah and it should be as far as i yeah it should be used so like because we think we have just the core benefits of forget all the container stuff those yeah. pillars of open embedded with license compliant build reproducibility put all that stuff in and build your containers with that not only do you get the same things you can leverage all of those, those great i things. mean i see noise on twitter from a certain large vendor of virtual machines crap I stop saying words like that. Um, you know about how to build containers for their things, and it's like I'm like, why aren't you looking at us? And 
Yeah, there seems to be a lot of. I mean, what I really like about this talk is I know almost nothing about containers, and it's really interesting to see this use case. Yep. And it's, yeah, I try to stay out of the guts. Come to meta virtualization, and we can show you all the guts and the details of how yeah. it works. But this is not that presentation. It'd be a two hour talk. I, know. I, I, yeah. I mean, my immediate thought is I need to go to a talk on how to make containers and what all these words mean. I think they're going to do that next, right, Scott? No. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Anything else? Oh, more? Yep. So, do you think having the sample would actually help adoption? Could you repeat? Uh, the question was, if we had the sample, would it improve adoption? I think so. Well, it, if it's the right example. That's why when yes. that one came out of nowhere last year, I kind of freaked out because I'm like, hey, we should you know, figure out what we want is the, the, the right example. But yeah, I think so. I mean, for people that don't get past OE core, if they saw that that was in there, it might be the thread to pull on to find uh, some more of the stuff. I think what I would say there is... We have a lot of talks about BSPs today as well, and there's a lot of pain there. And I think you're really right on target when we need some really good examples of how to do this right, rather than the BSP case where everybody does crazy stuff. Yeah, like even my little example there that if you could do, build it, push it to your that's Docker awesome. Hub, right? That's a nice little example that would show people that, yeah, you can absolutely do this and, and work with your own containers. But you would have to probably put Scopio into OE Core. Only if you needed to copy it up. I mean, there's a e, there's lighter weight ways to do it than Scopio. But yeah, I looked at it, right? And to build some of the runtime containers, some of the tools to do this are so giant that they spider out into about 80 different native dependencies because they all have ext4 manipulation. And anyway, so it's it's again, that's why I'm like tell people let's talk about it because it's not as as easy as we as just dropping the stuff into OE Core and then adding 80 yeah, new packages. So. Expert, uh, I mean, but we could dock food basically. We can ship those foods in containers. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, have you looked at uh, building containers or a flat pack, uh, flat pack format? Yes. There was. Yes, but to, to dig out the desktop key cut, it's but yeah, it, it's possible. I looked at snaps and flat pack. Um, and yeah, both are possible, but with their sort of coupling to their sandboxing and the desktop bindings to them right now, it wasn't as easy as just generating. But yeah, absolutely, that's something that you could, it's a, it's a little, get this done and it's a sort of an incremental uh, thing to do, especially if you can then leverage delta diffs and deploys and all kinds of things that you get with those, those packaging formats. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Thank you.